What is up you guys? So in this one, we're going to be talking about packaged tasks. So let me erase everything I had from the previous lecture. And a good example over here would be the factorial function. So did this probably, we probably did this before. So factorial, let me remove this as well. We initialize the K to be one, which is intended to be the result of the factorial. So in other words, we will be returning K later on. And for the moment, we'll count backwards. Each time I'll multiply K with an i right here i could output the result right and over here we're going to use what this lecture is about the package tasks and the following we'll be explaining what those really mean so really we've got this function that computes the factorial of a given integer n now in the main function what we did is that we created a package task here's the package task which is in, inside the future library so the package task is p along with the factorial function so it's attached to the factorial function that we define so t is a task being packaged up to a package and this package can be passed along to different places such as a different function or a different object or even a different thread so after here many things could happen at a particular instance of time, this task is executed, the AT6. It could be executed in a different context other than the place it was created, okay? So this is a package task, which means that it's a package of tasks that can be transported to a different place in the program and being executed over there. Formally speaking, a package task is a template class that is parameterized with a function signature of this task. So factorial is a function that takes an integer and returns an integer. This is captured here. Takes in an integer, returns an integer. So this is actually the signature of or the prototype of factorial. So factorial and int int should be should align. Okay. And so when the task is executed, it also needs to take an integer parameter. You can't pass here a char or something else. However, I cannot conveniently get the return value from T. That is, I cannot conveniently do this. Because T always returns void, unlike factorial which returns an integer okay now to get the return value we don't do this actually this is yelling at me so it's telling me a value of type void cannot be used to initialize an entity of type int so you can't put a void in an int that's what it's saying so to conveniently do that conveniently return the value I have to define an int x which is t dot get future dot get we saw this previously so this is the correct way to get the returned value from the factorial function. Note that a package task is kind of unusual. Why? Because when I create a thread, call it t1 along with the factorial, I can pass additional parameters over here, the constructor of the thread. And this parameter will be treated as the parameter of the factorial function. So in other words, to compute the factorial of six, it suffices to pass six as a second parameter to t1. T1 will understand that this six is the input of factorial, okay? But I cannot do that for package tasks. This is not achievable as this, as we saw over here. We should pass the task, the input of factorial. If you try doing that, it will yell at you over here and tell you, oh, no instance of the constructor as the standard package task that matches the argument list, okay? Instead, I have to use the bind function that we talked about previously as such. So we bind, create a function object over here as this function object is then passed to the constructor of the package task to create a package task. Notice that this new constructed function object cannot take the parameter anymore because the parameter is already packaged it's already bundled with the factorial function so this template argument also needs to remove the integer 
parameter over here. And when the task is executed, it cannot take a parameter over here. So as you can see over here, it's yelling at me. It's telling me this STD, the standard package task. Well, guess what? It cannot be called the given argument list. So I do this. <laughs> the package task is created differently from the way a thread is created. Now, let's address an important question. Do we really need this package task? At first sight, it seems that we can do all this stuff by just using the function object. Let's say I remove this, call call to t, which is standard bind factorial, and pass it 6. So now t is just a function object, and uh, later point or even maybe in a different thread or a different object different function i don't know i can invoke t so it seems like you know this function object can serve our purpose well we don't need a package task right the main advantage of a package task is that it can link a callable object to the future that is very important in a concurrent programming environment so let's say we have another scenario where i've got a double-ended queue as such. Also, I don't have a queue here. Let me include it. Include queue as the standard DQ. Pass it the package task with an int as such and the task queue such. All right, so here we have a task queue, which is a deck of package tasks. And in the main function, I don't want to execute the task T in the same function, which is really unhelpful. Instead of that, after creating the task T, I'll push it into the task Q, hoping that someone will pop off the task and execute it in an appropriate time. And this someone <laughs> would be another thread. Let's say E1, this thread 1 will create a package task as such T. And T is standard move as Q dot front. And then T execute. The main thread I'll create thread one so you know what let me call this thread one and over here i'll just call this thread t1 okay and then as we did in the first lecture of this series we will join this thread so now the main thread will create a task and push it into task q and then thread one will pop off the task of the task q and execute it so that the factorial function generates a return value. So when the task is executed, it generates a return value. Now, the question here is how do I get the return value? Especially if I want to return that value from this function, thread one to the main thread. Pretty really simple. We can use task t to create a future as such, as t.getFuture. Later on, when I need the return value, I can return, I can call the future.get as such. Now, is there any problem with this code? Now, is there anything problematic over here? The task queue is shared between thread one and the main thread, which means that we have a data race. The way to solve this is by using a mutex. So mutex queue. And before I access the task queue, I need to lock the mutex. So I'll copy paste all this inside the curly brackets as such. Finally, the curly. So we'll use curly brackets for that as such copy paste this inside call a lock guard okay. the mutex lock mute the locker same thing here before pushing back on off the queue you need a lock guard type mutex locker mute right and here typically i also need to pop off the task right after it's used so pop to the front notice that the front function and the pop function needs to be combined with the same locker, otherwise the code is not thread safe, as we've discussed in the previous lectures, and in particular, when we talked about the mutex. What do you think? There's still some problems. One is minor and the other is major. I'll start with the minor one. So the minor one is that T is no longer used in the main thread, so we can move it. Over here, we can move it. Task queue. Again, a problematic thing over here is that thread one might call the front function before the main thread calls the pushback function. This is a catastrophic thing. This is a disaster. Really, we need to make sure is that the front function is called after the pushback function. To accomplish this, we need a condition 
variable. Remember, we talked about this in this lecture. Call it cond. And before calling the end function, we'll call cond wait. Pass it the locker and a predicate. This predicate verifies that the task q is not empty. So how do we do that? Remember, return not task underscore q empty, right? And as we said previously, it's yelling at me over here. And we talked about this previously. With conditioned variables, you can no longer use lock guards. We have to use a unique lock, right? There you go. Right over here, we also need a con notify, notify one. Right? What do you think right now? Is it thread safe? Well, looks good to me. Let's make this function using the clang and then run. There you go. Thread safe. No deadlocks, no data race conditions, nada. Okay? Well, that's about it. This is how to use a package task for threading. This is the, you know, the design, the architecture behind a program that utilizes a package task. We've also reviewed how to use mutex and condition variables. Finally, let's summarize how to use future variables. So future using three ways, future, in other words, three ways, get a future. First way is using a promise, get future, right? Second way is in the package task, get future. And last but not least, in the async that returns a future. Okay, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you like the video, please consider liking it by tapping on the like button and subscribing to the channel. If you found the video also beneficial, share it on social media. That would be really helpful for me and you as well. If you found this beneficial, I could continue making videos of that sort. And if you have any questions whatsoever, you're invited to leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures. Not to be mistaken by this future, but future lectures, okay? I'll see you then.